All right, so in this problem, we have a region bounded by y equals two minus x squared. Let's actually graph this as we're doing it. So quick sketch time, uh, two minus x squared. So that's gonna be x squared. Uh, negative x squared would flip it upside down. And then two minus x squared, the plus two would move it up by two units. So it's an upside down parabola uh, shifted up by two units like so. X equals negative one, so that's gonna be here. X equals one, that's here y equals one. So if this is two, this is going to be one, something like that. So it's this region that we're looking at, and we're spinning it about the line y equals one. So we're spinning it this way. So it's going to be that football shape thing again. Uh, the majority of the details are in quadrants one and two. So that's what we need to blow up properly. So I'll do that. And I'll do one of these. I know this is one, this is two, one, two, three, one, two. So I know uh, this function is that, and I know that it crosses at uh, the x-intercepts of two minus x squared, we can find by setting the function equal to zero. So if I set zero equal to two minus x squared, I'll get x squared equals two, and x equals plus or minus root two. And square root of two is about 1.4. So I know that, you know, Somewhere here it's going to cross the x-axis and somewhere here it's going to cross the x-axis. So I know that 2 minus x squared is going to look like so. I know that I have one endpoint uh, or boundary at x equals negative 1, so that'll be this line. I have another boundary at x equals, or yeah, x equals 1, which is this. And then I have a boundary at y equals 1. So if I set y equal to one, I can find where that intersection is. So I'll get x squared equals two minus one, move this here, move the one to the right, and you get x squared equals one, which means x is equal to plus or minus one. So actually, the, the line y equals one goes through there, and this is the region we're talking about. So I can get rid of this for now, I can get rid of this for now, and this is root two, this is negative root two, this is negative one, this is one, this is one, and this is two. This is my function y equals two minus x squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is reflect it about my axis of rotation, which is y equals one. So that is going to rotate about that line. So when I reflect it, because of the symmetry, I'm going to get the same exact thing, just flipped upside down. Now I need to draw three trace paths. So let's say I pick this point, it's going to go like so, then go back out. This point is going to go down to the origin, turn around and then go back. Say this point is going to go down to about here and then go back. So those points are starting somewhere above y equal one, going down below y equals one, going behind the screen and then coming back to where this started. So that represents the, the revolution or the path of revolution we have. Now, here we need to be a little bit more careful than we have been in the past. So my solid of, uh, my representative slice is still going to be a vertical distance. Or if I'm slicing something vertically, the radius of that cross section will be a vertical distance. So radius is going to be some y value. But we have to be careful. The y value here is not the distance from the x-axis to the height of the function. So what often gets made a mistake on is students will think that the radius is going to be the distance from here to here, when that really isn't the case. The radius is just the distance from this point to here. The axis of revolution, which is y equals one, to the top of the function. Axis of revolution to the top of the function. Axis of revolution to the top of the function. So this is where labeling your picture accurately comes in handy. We know that this distance, say for this point, we know this distance will be given by y equals, uh, not sine x, two minus x squared. I know that this distance will be given by just one because that distance doesn't change. That distance is always the same. But if I were to pick some other point, so let's say I pick this point, the distance from here to the x-axis will be two minus x squared. The distance from here to the x-axis will be two minus x squared. 
distance from here to the x-axis to minus x squared. That y value will change throughout, but the y value here will never change. So the y value at this point to here, that distance is one. Distance from here to here is one. Distance from there to there is one. Distance from there to there is one. So the radius is some y value, but it is not the y value from the x-axis to the top of the function itself. It's not the height of the function. It's the height of the function minus one. The distance from here to here is the height of the function. And if I take away this distance from it, that's going to give me the radius that I'm looking for. So if the, the distance from here to here is two minus x squared, and the distance from here to here is one, this distance that I'm looking for, that's the radius, which is going to be this distance. That distance will be two minus x squared, which is the larger y value, minus the lower y value, which is one. So if that doesn't make sense, think about it just in terms of you know the height of a building. If the entire building is uh, 50 feet tall and you're somewhere at 30 feet off the ground, then what distance is this? If you're say in an elevator and you're 30 feet up and the total distance that needs to be traveled is 50 feet, how much is the distance that you still have to go? That's the radius of the representative slice. Not the entire distance, not 50 feet. It's not 30 feet either. It's the distance from 30 to 50. So in this particular case, the thickness because I'm still slicing vertically will be dx. And y will actually be the distance between two minus x squared, that function, and the function one. So it's the top function minus the lower function or the higher y value minus the lower y value, which gives you the value that you're looking for. So in this case, more detail is needed in terms of finding what the actual distance will be for the radius of the function. Uh, now the volume is where we start slicing, which is negative one, where we stop slicing one, pi r squared with respect to x. We know that the radius is some y value, but I cannot integrate a function of y with respect to x, so I have to take that distance, convert it to an x a function of x, and then square it. I cannot integrate y squared as it sits. So that radius we found earlier here was pi times two minus x squared minus one, the quantity squared with respect to x. Now you can clean this up, but the idea is that this is something that you can integrate because we're integrating a function of x with respect to x. The hard part here is actually coming up with the fact that this is your radius. That, that's basically, in my opinion, that's what the entire problem revolves around. No, no pun intended. Uh, if you can come up with the fact that that's the radius of your representative slice, the rest of it should be cake. See you in the next video.